Good evening, Year 10. Um, Sister Critchley here. Hope everyone's well at home. Um, I'm going to spend the next uh, 20 minutes or so just talking through um, the higher tier um, non calculator um, 1H paper that you've been doing at home for the last week. First question is an adding fractions question. Um, we need a common denominator. I'm going to choose from the 7 and 5, the lowest common denominator is 35. Going to convert both of these into fractions of 35 as the denominator, um, multiply by 5, multiply by 5, multiply by 7, multiply by 7, to give yourself the final answer of 17 out of 35. Next question is dividing. We've got a mixed number, so I'm going to turn that into, uh, first of all, um, a improper fraction. Um, 1 times by 3 is 3, add 2 is 5 thirds. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Keep, change, flip. You may also know it as. 5 times by 4 is 20. Um, oh, I don't, uh, yep, over 9. 3 times 3 is 9. That would give you full marks, um, but I saw that some of you did turn that back into its uh, mixed number as well, and that would also give you full marks. Question two is about multiplying decimals. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is turn them both in, into integers. Um, I've multiplied this number by 100, and I've multiplied this number here um, by 10, turn them into whole numbers. Then it becomes a multiplication sum. I'm going to lay out my multiplication sum like this. Um, eight. Just going to do this quickly, I'm sure. This is um, fine when you do this one yourself. Um, add a zero, don't forget to add the zero. Um, six, 21, three, four, five. When you add them back together again, um, you get five, eight, four, eight. However, because we've multiplied by 100 and 10, that's the same as multiplying by 1,000, we're now going to divide this number by 1,000 to be able to give my final answer. 5.848 would give me the full, full three marks for this question. Question three, write as a percentage. I think you probably know this one, but if you didn't, um, then percentage is out of 100. Um, we've times by 20, times by 20. So that's why it's 80% going to be my answer here. Um, as a percentage, I don't think anyone got this wrong, so 90%. Halfway between values, a good way of doing that is add the two values together and then divide by 2. Adding those together, you get 6. Divide by 2, you then get the midpoint, sometimes it's called, um, between minus 4 and, and 10 is 3. Um, this one, increase of 3%, and you after the money he is paid after the increase. So we're going to work out 3%. Um, it's a non-calculator paper. So I'm going to work out 1% first of all, divide by 100, to give me what 3% would be equal to, times it by 3, and then add those two values, the original value plus the increase together to get a new value of the increased um, wage of £1,545. Simplify expressions for this question here. You've got three x's uh, plus two y. Um, collecting like terms, three p take away p is one p. But careful on this part. Minus seven q add four q is negative still three q. Expanding the brackets, um, multiply the term front by both parts inside. Six times by two m is twelve m. 6 times by minus 3 is minus 18. And it's um, a solving an equation, doing inverses. Opposite, subtract 6 from both sides. That gives me 7f equals 21. And divide by 7 to give us that f is equal to 3. Question 8 is a kind of a, a better buy type question that comes up a lot. Um, step 1 is going to be to work out the area here of this garage floor. Area for rectangle, base times height, length times width, um, to give us 36 metres squared. Now I'm going to split them up into two parts here. Decor U, first of all. Well, each tin covers 12, so to work out the number of tins required, I've got 36 divided by 12 to give us 3. Um, and then, therefore, the cost 
is going to be 3 times by um, £3.70. Um, 3 times by £3.70 gives us £11.10. pence. For the paint uh, store, um, let's work out how many tins we need first. Um, each tin here only covers 10, so 36, which is the amount we, um, of, of coverage we need. Divide by 10, because each one covers 10 metres squared, is 3.6. But we can't go in and buy uh, 3.6 tins. We'd have to buy four tins here. So therefore, the cost for this one would be the four tins times by three pounds per tin, which is 12 pounds. Comparing these two values, you can see that Decor U is um, cheaper. And that conclusion at the end is the way to get the fourth mark. <clears throat> Question nine, um, we would like to draw the fourth pattern. Well, if I can see three, four, five, so it's going to be six here. Um, we don't have to be perfect sketches for each of these ones, just to give us the idea. There's my six, and one, two, three, and must be the four there afterwards as well. And we've just got that these ones were kind of our grey ones, something like that would be fine. Total number of, pa of tiles in pattern number 20. Well, the total numbers uh, for each of these patterns that we've got so far are four, four, five, six, um, five, six, seven, eight. And then I can see them going up in two, and that would be 10 as well. So it's going up in two each time. So I know I'm not asked for the nth term here, but actually I think this is probably the best way of doing it. The nth term would be 2n. The ghost number, or the zeroth term, take away two, would be two. So in this case, the nth term is 2n add two. Therefore, the 20th term, two times 20 add two, 40 add two, 42. Write an expression in terms of n for the number of grey tiles. We're only interested in the grey tiles. So let's have a look at the grey tiles for these pattern numbers. For pattern number one, we've got three tiles. Pattern number two, four tiles. Pattern number three, five grey tiles. This is going up in one each time, so it's kind of like just n. The ghost number is two. So n add two would be the correct answer for that nth term of the grey tiles. Question 10, we're asked to work out the area of this, and we've got identical rectangles, and other words, identical rectangles will be congruent um, rectangular tiles here. Um, therefore, the lengths and the widths of each of them are the same. I'm going to set this um, as the length here, as x. All of the lengths I'm going to call as x's, and I'm going to call the widths um, y's here. Now, using these two bits of information, I've now got x plus a y. x plus a y would be equal to 7. And I've got 2x plus a y is equal to 11. By subtracting these two equations, we've got that x was equal to 4. So this here is going to be 4. Now, if all of that is 7, we've worked out that y must be equal to a 3. In other words, all of these are 4 by 3 rectangles. So one rectangle, the area of one rectangle... will be 4 times 3, which is 12 centimetres squared. But we want the total area of the pattern, 1, 2, 3, 4 rectangles. So 4 times by 12 is equal to 48 minutes of the given so that's fine. Question 11, I've drawn out the seven leaf diagram already, just to save a bit of time. Um, I always do an unordered first. Um, just to, um, if you're not sure how I've put these in, um, these are all values between 156, my smallest value here, and 192, which is the biggest value here. So I've chosen to use um, tens, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 tens as the stem, um, and then the units as my leaves here. Um, so we went through 165, 165, probably crossing off as we put them into our stem and leaf diagram. 164, that 4 there represents 164. 176, that 6 represented that. And I put all those 20 in there. But then ordered um, underneath here, the ordered version, uh, which is ordering each of the, the leaves on each of the branches here. We haven't yet got the three marks, though. To get the third mark, we also need a key. The key would be something like this. 15 lines, 6 represents or 
means 156 centimeters, or height of 156 centimeters. That's how you get your third mark. We are asked to work out the percentage of these men with a height greater than 184. Greater than 184 is this one, this one, and this one. In other words, three out of the 20. Non-calculator, so three out of 20 is the same as 15 out of 100, and therefore it's the same as 15%. It's an estimation question, so we don't want the exact answer. To work out the exact answer, we would have done, uh, first of all, the income, which would have been exactly how much you get from ticket sales, take away the costs. But we don't want that. We only want an estimate. So I'm going to round all of these numbers to one significant figure. 20 times by 400, that's already one significant figure, which is equal to 8,000, take away 6,000, my estimation the amount that goes to charity to 2,000. Is it underestimate or overestimate? Well, this number here has been rounded up. This number here has also been rounded up to get to here. So the amount um, of for the sales is more than the actual value. Now, when it's more, take away the same number, actually we're going to get an overestimate, therefore, of the amount that we get to give to charity. So it's an overestimate, and the reason would be, in this particular case, both 19.95 and 395 are rounded up. Okay. Find the next term in this quadratic sequence. This is all going to be all about differences here. So we've got 3, we've got adding on 5, adding on 7, 9, 11, 13, it's going to be adding on 15, 51, add 15, gives us the answer of 66. Um, next one is the nth term of different sequences given by this, and we want to work out the sixth term, so we're going to sub in the value of 6 back into the value for n. 2 times by 6 squared add 5, 2 times by 36 add 5, 72 add 5, Get the answer 77. The mode for question 14 is the most commonly occurring um, number of badges um, that have been gained. Um, highest frequency is 8 here, so one badge is the mode. The median, well, if we add up the number of girls in this survey, we get 25 here. The position, therefore, of the median is 25 add 1 divided by 2. Um, that gives us the 13th position. Um, two girls got have zero badges, um, another eight have one badge, that takes me up to 10, um, adding on the extra four is 14. So the 13th girl, if you put these in order, would have two badges, so the median is two. The mean, we want to work out an fx column here, first of all. Um, this is multiplying to work out the total number here of um, badges. When we add up that fx column, we get to a total of 60. So the mean is going to be equal to the total number of badges, which is 60, divided by the number of girls. And when we do that, we get the answer 2.4. Um, we've also got 15 older girls. Um, we're told the mean number of badges by these 15 old, older girls is 4.4. So we want to work out the total, first of all, of the badges by these 15 older girls. And that's 15 times by 4.4, which they earn 66 badges. So the total badges um, have been able to gain from all of the old and the younger girls was 66 uh, plus the 60 that we calculated on the previous page here. The total number of girls in this survey is the 15 older ones plus on the previous page, the 25 young ones, which is 40. So the mean is going to be calculated by doing 126 divided by 40. Now, how would you do that um, without a calculator? Well, probably just keep on simplifying. Divide by 10, maybe, first of all, top and the bottom. Divide by 2, top and the bottom, and then just divide the top by 2. 3.15 would be one slash over that without a calculator. 
Question 15, angles add up to 280 inside a triangle. So you've got 7x plus 5x plus 18 uh, plus the 90 degrees in the corner uh, gives you 180. And you've got an equation to be able to solve now. 12x um, equals, I'm going to um, add those two things together um, to give you 108 um, and take that away um, to give us 72 on that side. So therefore, x divided by 12 to give us 6. But we're asked for the smallest angle here. Um, 7 times 6 is 42. Um, 5 times 5 is 6 is 30. Add 18 is 48. So actually the smallest one is the 7x angle, which was 42, 42 degrees. Okay, I've got some information about um, the age of these three people. Um, I'm going to start with J. I'm going to call J's age X. Uh, Kiara, uh, I'm going to call um, Kiara is seven years older. So whatever age J is, um, her age must be X add seven. Martha, though, is twice as old as this one here. So two lots of X add seven. And it says the total of their ages, the sum of ages, is 77. So we've got x plus x add 7, add 2 lots of x add 7, gives us answer 77. We've created an equation to be able to solve. It's going to allow us to be able to work out each of their individual ages. 2x add 7 plus 2x add, don't forget that part, 14 is 77. So we get 4x plus 21 equals 77 by collecting those like terms. Take away the 21, and you get 4x is 56. Divide by 4, your x is 14. So we've now got j is 14. Kyria is 71, is 21, and doubling that one is 42. So the, the ratio of their ages of j, uh, Kyria's, and uh, Martha's would be 14 to 21 to 42. And that's fine, that gives you four marks, but um, you would notice that that could be simplified um, all in the seven times table, so divide by seven, and that would also have given you, given you four marks. Question 17, um, did you swear that this is a right angle triangle or not? So let's first of all work out the, the side A to C. Well, A to C, this perimeter is 20, so take away seven, take away four, and that gives us nine centimeters. So is a four, seven, nine, a right angle triangle? Well, you might already know that it's not because it's not one of our Pythagoras triples, but let's use Pythagoras to deduce that that's not a right angle triangle. If it was a right angle triangle, then it would work. Pythagoras' theorem would, would work. So let's just try and add up the sums of the squares of the shorter sides. Um, and does that give us the square of the longer side? 4 squared add 7 squared, first of all. 16 add 49 is 65. 9 squared is 81. And since 65 is not the same as 81, it's not a right angle triangle. Question 18. Um, we've got the ratio in this company of men to women as 3 to 2. And we've got that 40% of the men are under the age of, of 25. So you've got um, three-fifths of the 40%. Total of the ratio is 5, so three-fifths under, under 25 of the men. And you've got here um, two-fifths of 10%. And I can combine these two to work out the total percentage of the people in the company that are under 25. For fractional amount, divide by 5, which is 8, times by 3, which is 24, so that's 24%. Um, divide by 5, 10 divided by 5 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4%. Add them together, and you get 28%. Question 19. Um, 64 to the power of a half, that's the same as the square root of 64, which is 8. You actually could have added plus or minus 8, but plus 8 was uh, enough to be the full marks. And this is a negative power of 2 thirds here. Um, negative power is the same as um, the um, reciprocal of the positive power. So the first thing I'm going to do is write that as 125 over 8 to the power of positive 2 thirds as a starting point. 
one of our rules of thirds is we can write that as 125 to the power of two thirds over eight to the power of two thirds. This means it's the cube root of 125 squared and the cube root of eight squared. The cube root of 125 is five squared over cube root of eight is two squared. That's 125 uh, over four. Um, or um, I think that's 6.25, but that would be the finest for marks here still as well. Question 20, uh, between which two times did the car travel its greatest speed? Well, it's when the gradient's the steepest. Um, so the gradient's the steepest between zero and 20. Um, between zero and 20, the gradient is the steepest. Um, work out this greatest speed. Well, let's have a little look. Um, we want to do for the speed is going to be the distance travelled divided by the time. So distance travelled divided by time here. Um, the distance travelled, um, if we go up, that's 300. So it goes up in 20s. That's 360 divided by the time of 20 seconds. And that gives me 18 meters per second. Question 21. Uh, we've got a circle and another circle inside it and it's the shaded region we're interested in. Um, that shaded region, um, we've got two radiuses here, um, is bigger than the area of a circle with a radius of n plus 13. So let's have a look at working out first of all the shaded region. Well, this is all going to be to do with the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So the shaded region, first of all, is the big circle, pi times by 2n plus 6 squared minus pi times by the smaller one, n minus 1 squared. This means 2n plus 6 times another 2n plus 6. And this means an n minus 1 times another n minus 1. When we expand these brackets, um, we're going to use our FOIL method, or the smiley face, to make sure we have four terms before we simplify them. 4n squared is the answer to 2n times 2n. We've got 2n times by 6 is 12n, and 6 times 2n is another 12n, so I'm going to put those back together in one go there to give 24n. And 6 times 6 is 36. Same for this one over here, n squared minus an n, minus another n, is just minus 2n, and plus a 1. I'm going to factorise with a pi. Pi is going to disappear like this, but we'll, we'll do this for the time being. 4n squared minus n squared is 3n squared. 24n minus minus 2n is the same as plus 2n, so that's 26n. And 36 minus 1 is 35. Now we're told that this is the shaded area, that's the area R we've just calculated. We're told that that's bigger than an area of a circle with a radius of n plus 3. So let's have a look at the circle that has a radius of n plus 13. Let's see if we can simplify that. Same principle. We'll do this in one go. n squared plus 13n, 13n is 26n plus 13 times 13, 169. We've got this equation now where this one is bigger than this one pi 3n squared plus 26n plus 35 is bigger than pi n squared plus 26n plus 169. Right, divide both sides by pi, so that's going to cancel, that's just a number. I'm going to subtract an n squared because to solve quadratics like this, what we really like to do is be able to put all the terms on one side and put equal to zero. Subtracting an n squared gives me 2n squared. If we subtract 26n from both sides, we get 0n though. So those are both going to cancel each other out. And once they cancel each other out, we could put that back equal to 0, so take away. But actually, it's easier to take away 35 from both sides to give us this inequality to solve. Divide by 2, and we get this inequality. Now, we're looking for the least possible value of n. Let's try some values of n. If n was 7, 
Well, 7 squared is 49, so that's not going to work. 8. 8 squared is 64, so it still doesn't work. We're told that n is an integer. So the next integer, the smallest integer that's going to work in this scenario is that n is 9. 9 squared is 81, so we've got an answer that n would be equal to 9. Last question. Uh, this is tough. We've got a question here on proof. We've got to prove that this length here is three quarters the size of this length here. And we're given three right angle triangles and all the right angle triangles have got 30 degrees in the corner here. So Non-calculator paper, um, because we've got angles and lengths of size in right angles triangles, it's going to be to do with Sokotoa but we're also going to need knowledge of exact trig values as well. So I'll come to those in a second. Right, I'm going to focus on this triangle. I'm going to call this triangle number one. We're going to try and work out the length of an expression for the length of this side. First of all, I'm just going to draw out a little sketch of that triangle one. Okay. So um, n in relation to this angle is the opposite. The side I want to work out is the adjacent here. So opposite and adjacent, I'm going to use opposite and adjacent, I'm going to use tan for this bit of the question. I want an expression for the adjacent. The expression for the adjacent here. The expression for the adjacent is the opposite divided by tan of the angle. Opposite is n divided by the tan of 30. So this is where you need to know your values of the tan of 30 um, without using a calculator. Um, I'm not going to go through this at the moment, but it's something to, to look up if you're not familiar with them. Um, the tan of 30, um, when you type in tan of 30 into calculator or something you have to memorise, is the same as the square root of 3 divided by 3. Now, I'm going to times everything by 3 here. Um, top and the bottom, so that gives me 3n over the square root of 3, and I'm going to rationalise that denominator by transing both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. That's going to give me 3 root 3n over 3, and those 3s are going to cancel to give me just root 3n. So the length of this side up here is the same as the square root of 3 times by n. Next, I'm going to look at triangle 2, and I think I'm going to try and work out the length of this side, or an expression for the length of that side here in triangle 2. Again, I'm going to do a little sketch of, of triangle 2 if I can. This side here is root 3n, um, and we've got 30 degrees in the corner here. Now, in relation to this one, this is the one we want to try and work out, so it's still the adjacent we're trying to calculate. But this one here is the hypotenuse. The adjacent on hypotenuse is this triangle here. This one, the, the cos, or cosine part of the Sokotoa rule. To work out the adjacent, I'm going to cover up the adjacent. To work out the adjacent, it's the cos of 30 times by the hypotenuse root 3n. Cos of 30, you might know this one. If you don't, you need to go away and, and learn these rules. That's the same as root 3 over 2 times by root 3n. Um, root 3 times by root 3 is 3, so that's 3 over 2n. So this one here is 3 over 2n. So I'm on to my last third triangle here, which is this one. 30 degrees in the corner, and we've got root th uh, what's 3 over 2n. We want to work out what y is down here. This is the opposite, uh, this is the hypotenuse, and um, it's a lovely question because the opposite of hypotenuse, it allows us to be able to work out the sine part of it as well. To work out the opposite, in other words, y, opposite, y, it's the sine of 30 times by 3 over 2n. Now, sine 30 is an easy one to remember, sine 30 is a half, Half times by 3 over 2, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 2 is 4, and you've managed to prove that y must be equal to, y must be equal to 
three quarters n at the bottom here. Okay, just talk through those last steps so you didn't quite see them. Um, y was equal to sine 30 times by 3 over 2n. Um, that was equal to the sine of the angle times by the hypotenuse to be able to work out the opposite. Sine 30 is a half, 3 over 2n, um, half times by 3 over 2 is 3 quarters, and you've got y equals 3 quarters n. Okay, um, that's um, the end of that paper. Um, that paper, I think actually the end may have been out of 83 marks, or 80. Um, don't worry too much about your, your marks when you put them back onto the onto the spread, onto, um, uh, onto the, the web page um, on the VLE, um, because quite a few of those were not marked automatically. Um, and it would take a bit of time for your teachers to go through those and mark those questions that were not marked automatically. Um, any questions on that paper, um, then please contact your teacher and they'll be able to talk through it in a bit more detail as well. Um, thank you very much.